Yes, and welcome back to another edition of the Kings of Anglia Fan Social. And the season is nearly done and dusted. Two more games to go, but it's been a pleasure to bring you this series, this podcast throughout the season. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm joined tonight by Ben, Segs, and Bono, aka View from you two, aka Matt, to discuss all things town. I'm um, going to go over to you, Ben, first. How are you doing, my friend? It's always a pleasure. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, Ross. Excellent intro. Um, I'm very well. Um, enjoyed Tuesday night. Um, I know we'll get into that a little bit in, the, in a second. Um, but yeah, no complaints from me. Looking forward to the weekend after what, what's been a short week, hasn't it? And uh, two games to go. A little bit of an odd feeling with nothing riding on, riding on it, but still looking forward to seeing how we come up, come up against crew. Obviously, the relegated side and um, the Ipswich have no hopes of the playoffs. But still, smile on our faces, I think, after Tuesday. And yeah, we'll see how we get on on Saturday. We shall indeed. And um, the next man that is joining us this week is good old Segs. And if you're watching on video, he's got a very rare away third choice kit, which just looks beautiful. And Segs is modelling it very well. Um, how are you doing, my friend? It's been a while, but it's always good to have you on. Yeah, not too bad, thanks. I hope everyone else is good. Um, looking forward to last away game of the season, actually. It feels weird going all that way for nothing to play for, but might as well go finish off the season well and uh, hope we get the three points and bring them back to Suffolk. That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, but you know it's still good to finish on a win. Yeah, it's always good to just go to a away day when you when you're traveling. You just want a good performance, and most importantly, yeah. most of the time, three points. So hopefully, we do do get that in Crew. And of course, it's good old Liam from Crew. Um, he's his derby. He'll be there, um, showing us his hometown. And um, yeah, I'm sure we want to see us beat his hometown as well. And uh, the final man that is joining us this week is good old Bono. How are you doing, my friend? Who I, I met his father on Tuesday, which was which is fantastic, although he's a Leeds fan. But we'll get into that later. That's, an, that's another story for another day. But Bono, welcome back to the show, my friend. Hey, Ross. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, good to be here. And yeah, you met my dad. Bless him. He's a Leeds fan, but somebody has to be. Oh, <laughs> just getting to there. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Fair enough. I was waiting for you to expand, but um, no, it's a pleasure to have you all three on the podcast. Um, let's get right into the takeaways from the last two games against the League One elect, um, who will most likely be playing League One football next season. Rotherham are having a bit of a, a shaky moment at the moment. Um, Wigan, we stopped them in their path to maybe getting promoted on Tuesday night, but um, we stopped them a good 2-2 draw, a very promising draw. We were 2-1 up and then Will Keane... Ken's back to haunt us and he goes and celebrates. But um, I think he's a good player. I know Segs is a big fan of Will Keane because of um, his exploits when he was here, uh, injuries and playing out of position and all that. But Ben, what are your takeaways from the two results? Um, of course, a defeat at Rotherham, but I thought we played OK. Second half, let's not talk about. But um, takeaways from the two games? Um, takeaways, really, putting the two games together... Um... You know, we should have really not lost to Rotherham. Probably would have been a draw, would have been a fair result. Despite the second half performance, I thought we'd created enough to to come back with a point. Um, and then Wigan, obviously, that is what we got when we could have won, could have got three points. But probably the fact that we matched the two best sides in the division, um, and obviously we drew twice with MK Dons. I mean, those three are better than everybody else. We didn't even have to play that well to do that. So what strikes me, sort of taking away when I was driving home. Um, on Tuesday night, I just I just thought to myself, if we'd just shown just a little bit more consistency this year, we could have been up there because that is, I think, the difference between those sides. You know, certainly on our day, we're a match for anybody, which uh, actually this season I've enjoyed playing those sides a lot more. They've been better spectacle, sort of less time wasting, usually less nonsense. I know the stuff with Morsi and Bennett has been flying around and that was a load of rubbish. But, um, but gen generally, a little bit disappointment you know, we, we know we're good enough. This season has been a bit of a wasted opportunity despite the signings and, you know, make, make, making everybody mix and gel and how long it's got to take and do that. But through the 90 minutes, we've been good enough to beat these sides. It's the it's the games in between that we haven't been able to consistently put a run, run together like they have. So we've got to learn lessons from Wigan and Rotherham, not in those 90 minutes against them, but in the, uh, in the difference in terms of the dropping of the points that we have against what you call maybe the lesser sides in this division. So that, that they might, well, that is my main takeaway. 
really good under the lights at Portman Road. So I really, and then I hope that against Charlton, the last game of the season, we can play again to a similar standard. But the main thing is we've just got to show better consistency because that is what we're missing this year. Rotherham and Wigan, fair play to them. I know Rotherham have had a blip, but you'd still back them, I think. Maybe just about if they get it together to, to pip MK Dons, but we'll see. Not our concern. Consistency next year, please, at Twitch. Indeed, and uh, taking those chances when we get, you know, we're on top all the time, but we just don't take those chances. Um, Sex, um, you were at both games. Uh, what are your takeaways from both of them? Um, some promising signs. Um, good to see us, well, be in front against Wigan, who are, you know, League One elect. Um, we just couldn't hold on, and uh, our old friend Will Keane was there to spoil the, the big win, and we could have got under the lights. Yeah, yeah I'll start with this picture for those who want to see, look, me and, me and Keane there. Can't see it very well, but you know, it's quite quite disappointed when he reacted the way he did. But you can understand it. Um, people were giving him a bit of shit. Um, so yeah, to yeah, it was it was written in the stars, really heckling him, and all of a sudden, corner right on top of his head. I mean, his, he did well to lose his player, lose his mark, lose his man, and back of the net it went. So you know, in the second goal, possibly Thompson should have done better to the cross. Um, and you know, if he had, which probably won that game two one. So yeah, um, I think the main takeaway is we've got to be more, more um, consistent, more lethal. Um, I mean, Norwood missing the chance that he had in the first half against Rotherham, um, Wolford, and going forward, I mean, he chose the wrong option out of two, out of three actually. Um, I've had to shoot or pass it back to Morsey, and Morsey proved against Wigan if it, if he had that ball after Wolfenden's run on Saturday, that'd have been in the back of the net. So you know. Um, Wolfenden chose the wrong option there against Rotherham. If one of those two go in or both go in, we're probably at least coming away with a point. Um, I don't think Rotherham would have. I think Rotherham would have struggled if we'd have gone one 0 up. And you know, this, we've seen it before them this season. They've done a bit of a blip. Um, I'd quite like to see Sheffield Wednesday sneak up there. Actually, it's looking more and more likely, um, which a bit of a surprise considering those three have been up there the whole season. Um, but yeah, I think it looked positive. I think the trouble is Ben was saying how we need to get more points against these. Middle, mid table, lower league sides, but they come to Portman Road and they shut the bus. They, shut, they just completely parked the bus against us, um, which Wigan didn't do. They went for it, and that's what allowed us to open them up a bit more. Um, whereas like Shrewsbury, um, trying to think who else, you know, Cambridge, completely come here and just park the bus, and we can't do anything with it. Um, I think that's what we need to learn to um, break down more often. Um, it doesn't help that we're more reliant on Burns, and as soon as teams work out that Burns is our main threat. The left hand side isn't up to scratch and we fall away. So I think that's our targets for the summer is just work out the weaker areas of our team and strengthen and then we'll be good to go next season. We'll those points will get on the we'll get those points on the board and we'll climb the table and we'll be top six, top two, with a doubt, as long as we have a good summer. Um which I'm sure we will do, especially with Ashton being in America this week. So um very positive, very exciting. Um we're still looking forward to next season. Um they said today season tickets are the highest they've ever been in a decade, aren't they? Or yeah. about to be. I do I do feel like this season would have been similar if it wasn't for COVID. I feel like season ticket sales last year had a bit of bit of a suffer because of, you know, uncertainty of COVID. So I think they would have sold more in that sense. But it's still a good sign for next season. I'm just looking forward to just ending the season really now and having a good summer and pushing on for next year. We need a good start, we need a good August and that this year. Yeah, that, that we do need a good start. And um, yeah, 21,000 at Port and Row on a Tuesday night, by the way. And it was a rearranged fixture. Of course, it was going to be Easter Monday. If that was on Easter Monday, of course, we still didn't have nothing to play for because the season's over. But it would have still been a lovely afternoon in the sunshine at Port and Row. But it is what it is. And Wigan, um, Wigan would have brought more as well. Yeah, they would have done. No doubt about it. Yeah. yeah, that's completely changed how many they brought down for that game. Yeah. So. Um, it's it's still still mad in League One. The amount of you know, well, next season the attendance we're gonna is gonna be could, could average twenty six, twenty eight every game. It looks like it anyway. But yeah, exciting times. But no one can say HMS pissed the league. All right, no one can say that. All right, if you say that, I'm slapping you in person. All right, I'm slapping you. Um, anyway, enough of that. I heard um, they're starting. To, they're getting the boat ready at the docks already. Uh, <laughs> I know you're joking. I know you're joking, but none of that. Um, <laughs> but Bono. Over to you, mate, to, to finish off this chat. Takeaways from Rotherham and Wigan. Uh, you looked at me when Gwion Edwards came on because uh, he was like, my former boy, my former boy. Um, another former man coming could have haunted us, but he didn't do much. But um, your thoughts on the, the two games? 
Ah, oh, the takeaways from the kind of top two. Unbelievable, really, because neither of them really impressed me. Well, actually, they did, because when Rotherham beat us at home, they um, they did look different gravy, but I think they, they played slightly differently when we went to their place a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think, like Morsi said, we're, we're, we're so close yet so far. I think a few tweaks here and there, and we're definitely kind of on the right on the right trajectory, which is um, easy for me to say. Um, I just think we're lacking that cutting edge. Um, obviously, I didn't go to Rotherham. I, I got a TV pass to watch it. And um, our, our striker, uh, Norwood, he just looked really, really isolated uh, because with the two kind of central midfielders kind of sitting a little bit and the two number 10s, which I think the jury's still out when it works, it's fantastic. When it doesn't work, it's kind of, it's almost pointless. Um, so I think there's a few tweaks here and there. Um, Tuesday um, with with Wigan was was absolutely fantastic. Like like you mentioned before, I, I, I took my dad. I arranged that ages ago. A uh, ticket office were able to sort him out uh, a seat next to me because the U two is is quite it's not an exclusive area, but it's difficult to get tickets there because they it's it's an overspill for other areas, so you can't usually buy tickets. And um, yeah, the atmosphere was was absolutely fantastic. It was a bit chilly. Once the sun went down, it was a bit chilly, willy wombat. But um, uh, the kind of it was the Will Keane pantomime villain thing. I mean, I've seen a few things this week about you know how how good would he be in, in our team, and you know it's a it's, it's a nice thought, isn't it? Um, and yeah, he was always played out of position, never really looked that fit and he's he's had an absolutely barnstorming season for Wigan Athletic who you know when we went to their place when we had McGreal and, and, and Dyer in charge they they weren't that impressive um we just have to find those consistencies to grind out to grind out results um I think you know we we, we do need a plan b because a lot of the time it's it's very very samey and when we do change you know for like when we lost a home against Cambridge when they they you know Mark Bonner tactically was absolutely spot on stopped us playing well if teams stop us playing we have to find another way to start playing because it is i love watching it um particularly from from my little bit in the u2 we're so close to the pitch seeing those little overlaps and those triangles is fantastic but if a team does its scouting and works out that that's what we do then you know we're not we're not going to score um but yeah just just seeing wolfenden as well going forward just is so graceful he's like he's like a gazelle wearing wearing football boots just just galloping forward and you know i think almost like like with the rotherham game he you know he had that chance which which segs alluded to i think that's obviously a side which side of his game which is a defender it's probably it's probably on the back burner there's probably lots of other preferences which defenders are, are, are kind of coached but um yeah i don't Although, you know, we probably are going to finish lower than what we did last year. The, the club is a totally different place. The team is a totally different team. Um, there's so much to be, you know, cheerful for, isn't there? So it's not it's not panic stations. There's no emergency podcasts or anything like that required, I think, at this time. So, you know, let's um, let's see how we do. I'm quite, I'm re you know what, I'm really looking forward to the close season. I'm a bit of a nerd. So, you know, what kit are we going to be wearing? Um squad numbers signings fixtures fixtures of course I, I think the fixtures are going to be released even earlier obviously because the season starts on july the 30th which is just <laughs> no. like oh my god so will that mean a, a, a pre season sorry it's later at least later aren't they it's like a couple of days before my birthday it's never that late i think it's i think it's around is it usually around june it's, 20, it's 20 it's 25 of june I know that for sure. Right. It's three days before my birthday. <laughs> so. Okay. so, yeah. So if they're released kind of on the 23rd of June for an August the 10th or August 8th kickoff, then can we take it that they'll be released at the beginning of June, maybe? I hope so, because... No, it's, that's, it's, you know, it's, it's 25th of June. It's been confirmed. Oh, it has been? Yeah, it's 25th of June. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you Sigs. 23rd of June. There we go, guys. Put it in your diary. Uh, we'll have a live and exclusive reaction um to that with um with ross and liam so yeah <laughs> liam <laughs> why, why liam <laughs> uh, he'll be driving you to all the games ross <laughs> hopefully by next season i'm driving myself um but yeah we'll, we'll see, we'll I'll, see. That's, I'll, that's I'll, raise glass, I'll raise a glass to that yeah watch 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 out other drivers you know for, from me um 
but yeah, are you, are you all done and dusted, Bono? Would you like to add more, my friend? I, I thought I gave you a really good segue, but yeah, very, very true. Um, uh, yeah, I think um, as you mentioned, uh, no emergency podcast will be needed, but there is an emergency discussion um, today. Of course, Tyree Simpson is a talking point. Um, he wasn't on the the podcast list of what we're going to talk about, but um, it, it, the club announced it today. Um, Kieran McKenna actually revealed that striker Tyree Simpson has told the club he would like to leave. Um, of course, he was on loan at Swindon at the start of the season, was scoring his goals, um, and then he got recalled, and he's been pay- basically playing for the under-23s. Um, I would go over to Ben to get his thoughts on this, but uh, Ben is currently with a black screen and circling, so I'm going to have to actually go over to you, Bono, because you're a man who... I would say you're a big fan of Tyree Simpson. I know you always talk about him and stuff, and you saw him play for the 23s a few weeks back when we lost. Um, your thoughts on this developing news? I'm a bit, I'm gutted actually. I'm, I'm really, really sad. So Tyrese, um, I think he's, he's he's fairly local to me in Mid Suffolk. So I've seen him a few times, stopped and chatted. Really, really nice, nice kid actually. Um, and yeah, so he went to Swindon, came back. Um, when I saw him for the under 23s, um, there was something, I think the body language was a little bit off, um, kind of overreacting to kind of 50 50 decisions and, and stuff like that. And he, 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 you know, he didn't, that day, he didn't show me anything to say that he deserved to be in a match day squad, let alone, let alone starting. Um, you know, who knows the reasons why that's between the club, the player and the representative. Um, I think he's he, he has come on since I think. Oh, when did I see him? Was it the, it was before COVID? I think he came on as a sub. It was a it was a midweek night game. And um, welcome back, Ben. And he's he's come on. I mean, when I saw him for Swindon versus uh, Manchester City in the FA Cup. He, he he did look a totally different play. It looked like he's worked on his his touch, his technique. Um, he he's a lot more athletic. So he's he's never not been athletic, but he he's closer to being uh, an all round athlete now than rather just a big guy for his age. Um, I mean, who knows how far he'll go with with the potential? Um, it's sad. It's always sad when an academy product. Um, leaves. I think it's an unusual step for it to be um, for it to be talked about kind of this early. I, I can't I can't recall any other. Usually things like this happen kind of um, in the post pre season, don't they? Um, but obviously the club have come out and taken what I believe to be an unprecedented step to say he has told us he wants to go, which I guess kind of quells a lot of our hopes and expectations that he that he will be staying but obviously um he apparently has uh, an option on his contract so you know the club the club might trigger that um in order to get a fee for him because obviously i mean it's only right isn't it i mean the amount of times that players go to to, to other teams for nothing at all and, and he's been with us what four five i think of five years um so yeah, gutted really. I mean, there's loads of speculation. Oh, it's the agent's fault, blah blah blah. But we don't know. It could be. We we don't know that. So kind of, let's see. I think it'll all come out in the wash. Um. So yeah. I mean, if you think about it, my closing thought is he was he was our fifth choice striker. Um. I've seen some reaction today, like you know we're we're letting like a pr- complete prodigy go. I mm. I don't know. I don't know. I think there's something different about him. That's for sure. Um, but I think ultimately his 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 style. I don't think would would fit under what Kieran McKenna wanted, which, you know, ultimately I think is is quite an important thing to remember. So good luck to him. Nice kid. I hope he um I hope he looks after himself and um will be I'll be I'll certainly be keeping an eye on how his career develops. Indeed. And um, Ben, I want to go over to you now. You're, you've returned. Um, your feelings on this then? When he got recalled and we weren't scoring the goals, our strikers weren't scoring, they were out, everyone was out of form. A lot of people were saying, Let's bring Tyree Simpson in. Where were you? You know, what sort of, were you on the fence about it all? Where were you in terms of, would you giving Tyree Simpson a chance? And 
your feelings on him leaving the club? Likely he'll get the option and then we'll just sell him on for a little little fee. Yeah, I mean, Lee's a little bit of a sour taste in the mouth. You never want to see one of your sort of academy lads um, leave in these circumstances. But whether we'll find out the full story, I don't know. Um, I think I said to a few, a few of the guys in the group that it is refreshing, at least, that we seem to hold the cards a little bit more, uh, being financially in the, in the place that we are now. We're not going to be held to ransom. I know Ashton sort of alluded about agent problems, etc. I'm not too interested in that. It, it's a shame whether he deserved the chance. I don't know. He's got a few goals for Swindon in League Two, but up until probably the end of March, so only a few weeks ago, were we really, really struggling, thinking maybe he deserves a chance. But we're not there every week at training. You know, McKenna, I think we've got to give him the benefit of any doubt at all in terms of Tyree Simpson and his development. Someone like him with his coaching pedigree should know best. Maybe with a better attitude, if it is an attitude problem, I don't know. Or maybe when I say attitude, instead of wanting to stay at the club, he'd have got a chance in these last two games. Again, never going to know. It's all hypothetical now. He's obviously said he wants to leave. If he sees that as the best way for a professional career, who are we to judge? You know, I'm not don't know the kid you know I, I i really think as much as we it is a story it is an ipswich town story we've got much bigger things to worry about to be honest I, if he if he goes on and rips it up in league one next year uh, and gets a deal in a league one club i'll be really surprised but i mean amazing if he does well well played to him as long as it's not against us It'd be great if it was for uh, maybe a middle mid table side and he takes those points off uh, promotion rival for against um Against us, so um, yeah, disappointed slightly that someone's leaving. On it seems like under a bit of a cloud. Obviously, the whispers that you hear do sound that it's a, a sad end to what could have been a really promising career with Ipswich. We'll see what he goes on to do, but yeah, he hasn't really cut the mustard for us as he's gone to Swindon, done okay. But yeah, good good luck, Tyrese. Hasn't worked out. Yes, I'm aware that my mic was muted. Um, I, I realised when I brought out the word was sex, and then uh, yeah, and then I realised there wasn't saying bingo, was, get your Ross bingo cards out. Pretty much, pretty much. My friend, all that jazz. I'm um, at sex. Uh, your your final your final notes on Tory Simpson. Um, are you that fast that he's not going to be playing for us? Not really. I think he had a golden chance to get into the team when Caden Jackson got injured. Caden Jackson was nowhere to be seen before Kieran McKenna. He got back on the team and showed how much we've been missing him at the moment. You think um, our season's gone a bit downhill since he got injured to be honest. Um, we haven't produced as much up front. Um, so yeah, as soon as Caden Jackson got injured, I think Simpson had his chance to impress. Um, if his attitude was in the right place, I think he'd have got at least on the bench and could have made his way into the team. But um, he hasn't done. And now he's he's shown that he wants to leave. Whether it's because he was enjoying his football at Swindon and had to come back or what I don't know but it's disappointing but it is what it is um good luck to him and see what see how it goes but I haven't got much to say on the matter I think I just generally think he could have if he had, if his attitude was there he'd have got into the team with Kate Jackson um I agree with sex and I I yeah I agree with that too um Bonner, I saw your hand up you just once again just agreeing as well I was agreeing but also you know, what I, what I don't think, and this is very much a young footballer problem that, that you know, I'm, I'm 40. I remember being Tyrese's age. What I don't think helps when, because there's lots of talk about attitudes and agents and stuff. What doesn't help is social media presence and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I follow lots of young footballers on, on Insta and Twitter and stuff. And, when you see there's there's very little football content and they're just modeling Balenciaga and, and other premium brands and stuff. And it's like, you've, you've, you've not made it. You've barely played 20 professional games. You've, you've, you know, you've not scored many goals and you know, you're kind of acting like your social media profile is you're, you're kind of making yourself out to be a bit of a, bit of a, oh, I don't know, but yeah, Pratt. it's, it's Pratt. yeah, but Pratt's yeah, yeah well, it was, well, well said. You won't need to use the beat button with me tonight, Ross. Um, but it's just, you just kind of look at it and just think, why? 
Why, why, why? Go and win the Premier League, the UEFA Cup. Go and get some caps for your country. Score 25 goals and then give it the big and sitting in a hot tub with a bottle of something sparkly and cold. But, yeah. Yeah. Not when you're still living with your mum or whatever. Do you know what I mean? But there you go. Onwards and upwards. Good luck, Tyrese. Indeed. And um, Seth, we're going to bring in a bit of Chris Jericho. A little bit of the bubbly. A little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> For the wrestling fans out there, a, bit, a little bit of the bubbly. Um, anyway, let's get into some funny stuff, um, some silly stuff. And that is the strike, Ben, Seggs, Bono, go head-to-head. Got four questions slash a tiebreaker if needed. We'll we'll probably do the tiebreaker because we always do. Um, it's always good to gamble. Um, well, not, not too much, you know, when the fun stops, stops. But in terms of just the tiebreaker. Uh, question number one, <laughs> play at home if you're listening. Um, you are listening because then we're basically talking to ourselves. Um, I'm gonna shut oh, up. Now. Oh, question... oh, oh, dear me, mate. Um, question one is on Velice Shimulakoski. He celebrated his birthday. Is that right? <laughs> so you say it? Um, Close enough. Yeah, yeah, I won't bore yeah. you with my um. With my pronunciation yeah. skills, it is it is one of my area, my specialist areas of skill. Is. But this isn't yes. this isn't the Bono show, the Ross. Yes, show. yes. But um, yes, he celebrates his birthday on Sunday, so happy birthday to him. Then, um, he scored his only town goal against which team? Was it Blackpool, Barnsley, or Bristol City? It was in a a home win. Um, he scored one of the goals, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That, that's fine. It's, it's a long time ago, Sex. Um, it was 2007 or eight or whatever time it was. Didn't have, an, anyway. didn't have, didn't have an H in it? Um, no. No? no. When, when it came up, I was, I was pretty confident it was this team. And now the team's come up, so I'm really going to be annoyed if it's wrong. Okay. Take it away. I've gone... Can you see that? Blackpool. Blackpool, yep. Yeah. I can remember. I went Barnsley. Barnsley? Blackpool. Yeah, probably wrong. It is Blackpool, so it is one one zero. But Seg, do not worry, we've still got a couple of questions to go. Do not worry. Question two is on how many times has Town won at Crew in ten games? So I've only played them at Crew. So this is at Crew um, in ten games. So the closest Sorry, is it at Crew? Yes, at Liam from Crews. <laughs> at Crew. How many times have we won at Crew? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gutted. I'm gutted. I'm not going. I've got one of my one of my one of my friends from work lives in Crew, and um, yeah, but he's he's away. Great yeah. story, Matt. Yes. Um, Very good. Yeah. Uh, so closest to the correct answer gets two points. No, gets a point, and then if you get it bang on, you get two points. Okay, take away. Just want a little swig of water there. Um, I've gone five. five. I went five. How you're right. How? Seven. Now it is five, so it is double points for Segs and Ben. So it is three, two, one. But Bono, do not worry. The next question is on one of my boys, D McDonald. Remember him? I oh, do. Only... No, ben. Did he go to Gillingham after it switch? Yeah, or we was question. That's the question, Ben. You can't. Tell no, me. no, no. No, dragon. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, but he scored his only Town goal against Crew. But how many games did he play for Town in total? Um, so once again, two points if you get it bang on. Point if you get closest. So it is three, two, one. Good old Dean McDonald. He also had a spell in Inverness, um, another team that Liam supports. He supports a lot of teams. That's why a lot of places supports a lot, a lot of places. Teams, really yeah, I feel like we're, I feel like we're you know being horrible to Liam, but we, we love Liam. Here. He's he's my main driver. Good old Liam from Crew. He's all, he's all right. He's right. Ah, uh, right. Dean yes, McDonald. yeah, Ben. Dean McDonald. McDonald, yeah, McDonald, who scored his only goal. It was on Valentine's Day in 2006. Adam Lee uh, had to get come off injured, so Dean McDonald had to come on as a substitute. Um, and yeah, we won two total appearances. Match. Yeah, total appearances in the league and cups, all competitions. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, Seg. Sorry, should have Bono, you're nodding like you actually know. He does. He's, has he done some got... research? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm I don't not think you had enough time. I don't think you had enough time to Google it because I think you have to, you know. 
where's the where's the honesty and integrity there's no yes. there's no joy in that kind of thing is there no. uh, i always i always nod because ev every week someone you are that guy that this week ben that kind of questions the total the totalness of the total <laughs> I've got no idea. I put 24. I mean, it doesn't matter if you see it. It's not going to be right. Okay, 24. 16. I went 15. Oh. Well, somebody is bang on. And that somebody is Thomas Seggins. Oh. It is 15 appearances. There we it's go. good job you said about the cups, because I went 12 originally. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Shows you work in sex. Random. Yeah, I think he made five did... starts, ten, ten yeah, came off the bench. Yeah, he didn't play very often, did he? No. Yeah, he he got, signed he got... with another lad, didn't he? I think they were both... Did they... Two players joined from Old Ford Academy in London or something like that. He signed with somebody yeah, else, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. He came from Arsenal. He, he signed from Arsenal. That's it. Yeah, not Old Ford. But, no. Yeah. <laughs> Move on. Okay. So, yeah, so Segs is in the lead. It's three. No, wait, Ben's got three. You got three, haven't you, Ben? I got three, yeah. And then you got two points, didn't you, Segs? I'm, I'm losing you track of it. You got the first one wrong. But you got two. So he's, he's got four, you've got three. Got four. Yeah, Segs has got four. Uh, I need a counter. I need a counter. Um, you need, like, Carol Vorderman. Yes, pretty much, pretty much. Or um, um, the other one. We need Jermaine Jermain Wright. We need Jermaine Wright because he's the next question. Um, and this is a chance for Ben to get back in it, or Segs won. Uh, but unfortunately, what? you can still play. You can still play. It's fine. It's fine. We, well, I've got a tiebreaker. Once again, whoever's in the lead, they can gamble and they can take, you know, take it there. But anyway, um, Geraint Wright joined town from Crew. But what was the fee? Was it 450k, 500k, or 600k? And look, there's some very Segs and Bono straight away on it. It's just a guess. Just a guess. Um, 500k. I went 500k. 600k. Yeah, jammer. It is 500k. So Segs has won this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, Bono. It's, um, you, I'm, I'm sure you had fun with the strike this week. Did you have fun? I did. And Segs, congratulations. Well okay. done. Now, depends. Are you going to gamble, Segs, with a tiebreaker? Well, I've won either way, but I'll gamble. Gamble. It's fine. <laughs> Well, no, if, if Ben gets it bang on, he wins. Okay. But it depends if he gets a bang I mean, on. I can't That's believe it. I've done the strike. I've only got one wrong, and I still didn't win. <laughs> the, du the double points has done you, mate. The double points has done you. And, yeah, Seg's got double points on back-to-back -back, um, questions. But um, the, fo the tiebreaker, and Bono, you can play as well. You can, you can win, possibly, if you get it bang on. Um, but how many games has Town won away this season in the league in 22 games? So, um, of course, just the league. So, well, Cup doesn't matter because we, we lost at Barrow and um, I think that's it because we lost in Newport County. The, in the... The, the clues in the question in the league. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just, <laughs> just, I'm just bringing it up. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, 22 games this season away from home. How many games have we won? Ooh. So if you get a bang on Ben or Bono, you win. But um, if you don't, then Segs wins overall anyway. He's gambled. He's done it. He's gambled. Play at home. Let us know you got on. Hope you enjoyed on your bike ride or your run or your drive into work or back. You could be even listen to this when you're on your way to crew. Hello. In, in the bath. In the bath. Yeah. If you if you fancy, if that's you know if that floats your boat and all that sort of stuff. Your little rubber ducky. So I put my first one and then I've crossed it out and then I've gone back to my first guess again because I can count five straight away. So I've gone with yeah. six. Okay. That's it. One has gone eight for the listeners at home. I've gone seven. And someone is right and it is bang on. And that person is basically a triple crown winner because it is sex. It is seven wins. Seven wins, six draws, and nine defeats in total. And I hope that does calculate to 23 games. No, 22 games. I think it does. Do your quick maths. It does. Um, Sex, you won the Strikers League. Them. I can name them. Lincoln, Pompey, Wickham, Donny, Wimbledon, Jules, Fleetwood. Boom. 
Boom, in the room. That is knowledge, my friends, knowledge. Um, but Seg, speech for winning the strike this week. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'll do. <laughs> Fair enough. Easy, well played. Easy, 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 <laughs> easy, easy. I'll bring you some more competitive competitors next time. Uh, I'm joking, Ben. Bono, you were good, good gamership. You did really well as well. Do you want to? Do you want to know something? Those games that we won, I didn't see any of those. I've not seen us win away. Oh, uh, and, and sadly, you were at Barrow once again. That was a cup game, so it doesn't count for this question. But whatever, I'm bringing it in. Um, we have got a, a nice little feature to end the pod later on. It is talking about our. Our favourite away game of the season and also our, we've got to bring our worst because there has been, we'll highlight them later. But let's talk about the signings this season. I've been seeing there's a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of threads going about um, of people rating the summer signings. So I thought, obviously I'm going to nick that and bring it on the podcast. So whoever is originally credited to, thank you very much. Um, we're going to bring out our ratings out of 10 for all the signings. So bear with us, stay with us. Get your drink, whatever you whatever you fancy. Sit down and relax and enjoy. Ben, goalkeepers first of all. Um, Christian Walton and Vladklav Alanki, whatever his name is. Um, out of ten, what are you giving them? I love. Um, I, I gave I gave Vladki five out of ten. Um, I'm just putting it out there right now. I don't believe a ten out of ten exists unless we get a thirty goal top goal scorer in the Premier League. OK, so nine is the maximum anybody's going to get. There's only one person who's got that in my list. And that actually is Christian Walton. I don't think he could have possibly done anything more. Like uh, The guy's unbelievable. He's by far the best goalkeeper in the division. Um, Halaki, a little bit harsh on the five. But when you look at all the other scores, so he made a few uh, he made a few gaps. Maybe a bit of a victim of us not being organised at the beginning of the season. But he's a five. Walton's a nine. nine. Unbelievable goalkeeper. Right up there for player of the year. Legend already, like in terms of this season, this season alone, he's been one one of the you know best players. I agree with you too because he's been he's been unbelievable. Like even the, on Tuesday night, that point blank save, you know, Genoi, you know, one of his one bad thing he has done this season, and it was a point blank save. And yeah, good up, good old. He's such calming influence, amazing from crosses, real presence as well. I, I just it's just such a fantastic sign and so it makes such a difference having a goalkeeper it was such a neglected position for years we used to have a goalkeeper Clive Baker who's like five foot four now we've got an absolute beast sorry Clive Baker brilliant shot stopper um but yeah Walton nine thanks there we go and then Alanky for uh Segs over to you rating those two goalkeepers out of ten uh Walton nine like that it's the best goalkeeper we've had since Bart without a doubt um <laughs> much since then hasn't been great to be fair with Holy Norris and all the, all the others, don't want to mention them all. But yeah, Walton's a nine, best like best keeper in the league easily. Um, I do think his distribution can be a bit slow at times, but apart from that, he's you know he's one of our best signings of the summer. Uh, well, on loan obviously, and then signing him in permanent. And then Haladki was a four. And he's done all right, but obviously hasn't had the games. And also, I think um, he's one or two made errors. And the reason why we got Walton in the first place, really, I think he was brought in to be our first choice, and it didn't work out. Cook. Tried to get a better keeper, and he did. So there we go. Bono, over to you then. Final sound on the, the goalies. Um, Vaz, uh, Vaz Hatsky, Um, he gets he gets a six. Um, yeah, and like the guys have mentioned, he was. I think he was a victim of our absolutely abominable um, defending at the start of the season. Just like the kamikaze fullbacks, just leaving like two people back. Um, you can't, you know, when you look back at it, you can't fault signing him. The guy had pedigree. He was, what, he kept 22, 23 clean sheets in League 2 the, the season before um, for Salford. Um, but, yeah, he, he, he gets he gets a six. Very nearly a seven, because I, I like him. He's handsome. He's, um yeah. Uh, and uh, Walton, well, what an absolute... Absolutely fantastic goalkeeper. He gets a nine from me. Um, and the, the the exciting thing is, with the laundrette, with all those clean sheets, um, he um, he is still twenty six. We've got him at his, you know, prime goalkeeping age. We're is he really twenty six? Is he twenty six? I think he's twenty six. He, yeah. he is. He is twenty six. Yeah, he's, he's, he's really young. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Wow. Even though he looks, he, he looks. I think he looks like a geography teacher. He's 
You look like somebody that would like would have would have taught me. Um, I watched not, uh, geography teachers, by the way. But I um, watched um, a film a, in based in Germany in Berlin. It was on Netflix. Very good, very good film. And there's a guy in it. And literally, it's like his twin. And it bothered yes. me the whole thing. I was like watching Christian Walton trying to um, stop World War Two. I don't know if anyone else can reference that, but it was a film about being in Berlin trying to stop World War Two. It's on Netflix. Very good. Very good. Yes, I've I've seen that. I've seen that. I can't I can't remember what it's called. Uh, anyway, back to um back to talking about the laundrette. I, I love his little pregame pregame routine that he does. Uh, watch him. That's all I'll say. Watch him. He does the same thing every game. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just hope he, he'll be our Premier League goalkeeper in three years' time. All right. Big statement there, Bono. But we shall see. We'll, we'll clip this up and we'll see what where we are in, in three years' time. Hopefully not in League One. Um, ben, defender's time. And uh, Matt Penny, George Emerson, Cameron Burgess, Hayden Colson. Remember him? And... Dominic Thompson. Um, I thought we'd just rattle them all out because why not? So take it away. Your thoughts on all of them out of 10. Okay, I'll start with the most disappointing ones. Coulson, to begin with, actually put not non applicable. Um, but then I guess we have to give a score. So I gave him three. It wasn't completely useless. I actually thought he showed quite a lot when he was on the pitch. Just too many problems with injuries. Um, which is a real shame because we have had, there's been a huge hole in our, our whole system down the left hand side. Unfortunately, moving on there, Penny's just not cut the mustard. Um, he has got a really good left foot, excellent delivery. He's got parts of his game that definitely, um, you know, I'd like to see more of. Uh, probably the left wing back role suits him a bit better. But again, you know, he went off injured Tuesday night. I think through no fault of his own, just physical game, got caught out. So, Colson three, I've given Penny a five. Slight upgrade from Penny. I've, I've actually given Thompson a six. I know he gets a bit of a hard time, but don't think he's as bad as some people. There's always a few people, players people aren't happy with. I actually think looking at the video again of the game on Tuesday, people were digging him out a bit. I think, I know Wol Wolfenden talking on water right now, um, but I think he should have got across to the near post. Good, good centre-halves. And I think usually Wol Wolf Wolfenden would have done that. So anyway, Thompson's a six. Um, and then we're looking at the centre-halves. Burgess has had a bit of a renaissance. Difficult for him to get in the team at, at some points and he had a difficult start, but actually upgraded him to a seven over the last few weeks he's really shown and he's probably our best player Tuesday night um really showed some potential and actually Edmondson who I think had a fantastic season probably overall well Borfin and Donassi and Edmondson are absolutely superb weren't they I, I've actually given I went 7.5 and then I've, I've gone eight for Edmondson eight because again I'm not his distribution is very good we're not so allowed we're point five. Five. So we're not doing point five. Yeah, you've so got to round up. Fine, sorry. Yeah, yeah it's fine. It's fine. So, Ed, yeah, Edmondson's at eight. I think he's had a really good season. Shame he got injured when he did. Um, but credit to Burgess that we haven't missed him. Like, I really don't think we have. Um, and that's it, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Have you? No, I think that's it. Um, I was listening, but I. I, no, I no, Ed, Edmondson, Burgess, Penny, Coulson, Thompson. Five. Yes. Yes. There we go. There's the five. Um, Seg, over to you. Ben just rattled out the defenders out of 10. What are you giving them all? I'm not going to list them. I'm not going to go through it because no. exactly the same. <laughs> oh. It's exactly same the same. Course. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah. Penny five. Um, Colson three, who was kind of non existent really for most of the season, wasn't he? Uh, the first half of the season. I always remember going to Plymouth, expecting Burns, Dineshian, and Aluko, and we end up with Colson on the right hand side. Um, <laughs> bit of a all that way and you end up with that um but yeah it did i say he was injury prone didn't uh, didn't uh didn't contribute much unfortunately um he would he would have been a good season uh, signing if it wasn't for the injuries obviously but i think um just hasn't helped there for that score um penny was a five who else was there again and then i've got him in order that's the trouble burgess burgess <laughs> burgess burgess yeah, i went seven um let's say had a bit of a difficult start the season under cook um but then sort of couldn't get back on the team because Wolford and uh, Fridge and Dinesh and all had a good, um, played well together under McKenna. Um, and then obviously Fridge got injured, unfortunately, and I just got a bit of a break, break in. I could have given him lower simply because of the shoes we're sending off, which was a bit unprofessional in my view. He did say sorry, but I do think it was uncalled for. Um, and it gave Baggett a chance against Robin and he did really well, but I, 
you know, I, I think that was unnecessary, but he still gets a seven for me. He's done, he was a rock again on Saturday, uh, Tuesday. Um, so he's done really well and fridge as well. Eight, made had a few mistakes in him. Sheffield Wednesday, Bolton, two examples. Um, he's potentially cost us, but overall he's been pretty solid and he's done really well for us. Um, perhaps not suited to that left-hand side like Burgess is. Um, but they're different different defenders, obviously. But, um, I think he's, he's obviously got more flair about him. But it's, I think it's the left hand. It's, it's, he's not left footed, which worries me a little bit with Fridge being on the hand side. Um, but yeah, it's, I think with those, the back four that we've got in terms of Fridge, Burgess, Wolford, and Dineshin, I think we're pretty set for next season there. So Indeed. Indeed. And yeah, we've got, of course, Baggett and, um, and Darbo, who's at Salford doing well. He'll, he'll be returning. Um, that is a position I think we're, we're pretty solid with at the moment. We shall see what Kieran McKenna does do there. Uh, Bono, are you snap snap with Ben Elsegzo or you got different scoring for all the players? Just slightly different. Um, Penny, six. Edmondson, seven. Burgess, seven. Coulson, five. Thompson, six. Um, I'm very interested in why Colson's got a five, but carry on. Because when he did play, he looked all right, but he was injured, which I don't know. It, one of the injuries wasn't his fault, was it? Was at the Wiccan game when he got taken out? Yeah, he horribly. Got, got carried off. I'm really sad about Colson actually because his his dad was really nice on was really good on social media. I know that kind of means nothing to normal people, um, but he. He looked really decent, surprisingly small. He had a bit of the Dan Hardings about him, where up front he looks just like a like a little wombat type creature. Um, but he had a lot of promise. And but the strange situation with him is he he was injured, and we, we presumably sent him back because he was injured. And then he goes and signs for Peterborough when he's driving back up the A1 to Middlesbrough and plays for them two days later when we hadn't seen him for months. So that was, that was strange. I'm, I'm actually gutted that, 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 that didn't work out, but yeah, I'm not giving any threes or fours. I'm, you know, I'm a glass half full man. So. I was going to say, um, that Wickham game, obviously Burgess came on, did really well at left back that game as well, didn't he? Which is the yes. last time we saw him on yes. it. And also yeah. Fridge deserves no less than a seven just because of his coffee club role. Yeah, very true, very true. Um, I'm, I'm hoping, he, you know, we, we, there's potential of him maybe playing the final day, game of the season, but that's just me just spitting random stuff out. But you never know. Could could come out, pop up out of nowhere. You never know. Yes. McKenna, McKenna did say it was, only, it, was, it was only Jackson and Edwards that wasn't, it was ruled out yeah. for the rest of the season, wasn't it? So he still could come back play against Charlton, yeah. which would be good if he does. He does, yeah. It's you'd, you'd like to see it. But I just think with an injury like that, I, I remember having a few ankle injuries when I was younger. And yeah, I was never a professional sportsman. But if your ankle doesn't get right and you do it again, then pff, I just think, is it worth risking people like, like Evans and Edmonton and, and people like that for a, for a nothing game? I'd rather see I'd rather see Baggett, um, to be honest. But yeah, I, I, I love the fridge on that coffee club. I've, I've been to where they film that. Obviously, I'm not going to mention it, but it's um, it's really nice. <laughs> I tried to I tried to sit where they film it, but there was some other people there, and I was like, "Get out of the way!" I was like, damn it! <laughs> but yeah, they do a very nice vegan sausage roll, mmm, plant based goodness. But there you go. Should we there do we the go. midfielders now? Yes, midfielders. Let's get cracking then, Ben. Um, what, what actually what we're going to do is we're going to split them up a little bit because there's a lot of midfielders slash wingers. So we all do midfielders and then wingers afterwards. Um, or maybe what we'll do is we'll do midfielders in the base role. So we've got Morsey, Evans, Harper, and uh, Backerson, and Carroll. So, oh, so many. So Morsey, Evans, Carroll, Backerson, Harper. Harper. Yeah. <laughs> do you get that, Ben? Yeah. Carroll <laughs> and Harper, both threes. Um, Harper just wasn't good enough. I hope he comes back a better player, but from what we've heard from um, various sources of crew, he hasn't done that well over there. Um, again, as I said at the start, you, people might think these are harsh, but I've not seen anything. They've not contributed anything to, to the football club, Tom Carroll, either, apart from being on the pitch and doing like Tom Carroll, Andy Warren got it spot on. He doesn't look like he enjoys playing football. 
Like he's on, he's on the pitch. And generally, I feel, I feel awkward watching him because he doesn't look like he's enjoying it. He's sort of going through the motions. I thought a player like him is trying to rekindle his career, really, from being, at, you know, the QPR just wants to use your Spurs who play a higher level than we do. Um, yeah, really disappointed with him. He's the sort of player I really like. Neat and tidy, keep the game going, but it just hasn't worked out. He's been bullied off the ball. He hasn't been able to get around the pitch as well as I'd hope. So, yeah, sorry to say, Carol and Pigger both get the um, sorry, Carol and Harper both get the three treatment. Um, and then I've got Evans and Backinson. Um, now I've actually got them at the same score. Because I know a lot of people don't like Backinson. Again, I think he does a lot of stuff that goes completely unnoticed. I think he breaks up play really well. He complements him obviously really well. His huge legs sort of stretch and block passes, interceptions. So I've given him both a seven. I think Backinson's helped with our form under McKenna when Evans has been out of the team. Showed how much we missed him when he didn't play against Cambridge United. And Evans gets a seven, which was, I was hovering over six. And then I thought that hat trick against Doncaster was absolutely class. And we have really missed him. And any centre midfielder is getting a hat trick, and overall, it's played really well for us. We have definitely missed him not on the team that's raking passes um, hard in the tackle. Um, so he gets a seven, and Morsi is an eight. He's probably my favourite player at the moment. He just absolutely bosses the midfield. Started really slowly, but he's been our best player, certainly outfield player, the second half of the season, um, so probably since February onwards. Now he's adding goals to his game. He looks like a superb captain. You know, sort of real leader of men kind of type, which fans can definitely get behind. So, yeah, more season eight. So that was Carroll three, Harper three, Backinson and Evan seven and Morsi eight. There we go. Sex, um, over to you. Um, slightly different this time. Carroll have gone three. I don't want him to be here next season. Um, enough said. Harper went five. I thought he started off all right um, at this early the season. I thought he looked decent, but he just kind of fell away, unfortunately. Um, just wasn't suited next to Evans for whatever reason. Um, and then, of course, Morsey come in and completely shaped the team up and he just couldn't get back in. Um, didn't really know where to play him. Couldn't really know where to play him. I think it's the same as happening at Krug. He's been all over all over the field, as far as I can tell. So um, I hope he's, he's been... He was a potentially a good signing. Um, I hope he still is. I'm not sure if he'll be here next season, though. But um, it'd be nice if he was. I see, see him progress on, at us, but... If he doesn't, then it's not the end of the world. Um, Backerson, I went to six. Um, agree with what Ben said, though. Um, I, he compliments Morsey really well. He's done really well since being here. Had a bit of a slow start again, maybe because I have a, a, a player at Bristol City, maybe. Um, but, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's impressed since his, his, especially these past few games. I think, was it Cambridge where he didn't start? Yeah. Yeah, and Carroll easily should have started. Um, I think we'd have won that game if he did. Um, Evans have gone seven. Unfortunately, hasn't been playing as much as we'd like. But again, another player has who has improved since morsey has been here. Um, and he's, I, if if he was fit with Morsey this half of the season, I think would have been higher up the table than what we are. Um, so you know, his injuries have big, been a big loss for us. Um, good pass of the ball as well um, when he wants to be. So and then Morsey nine, who's made a big difference, um, especially this half of the season. Um, we missed him when he was, when we um, when he had his form game suspension. I thought we, you know, his big big loss. We didn't have we didn't have anyone to replace him really. Unfortunately, we didn't really play anyone good enough to kind of. We missed him, but we didn't miss miss him as much as we could have done. You know, it was only the I think it was Sheffield Wednesday was the only game we had without him, which was the biggest you know the biggest miss. So and we lost that one. So. You know, and I think if, you, if he'd been playing and our, the way that we've been playing sort of March, February time, we'd have, we'd have beat them, especially if Morsey was on the team. So, you know, it's a big loss. Um, so, you know, he's a good captain for us. Um, sometimes it's a bit fierce, I guess, but, you know, it's, he's got his he's got the passion. Um, you know, teams know to wind him up, though, as they're in trouble, like the other night when a, a blatant dive. But, but yeah, you know, um, really good signing for us. Our best one, our best of the season. And, um, you know, Really looking forward to having him here next year and being part of the project. Indeed. Um, so, Bono, over to you just to um, remind you, Morsey, Evans, Harper, Baxton and Carroll, what are you rating them out of 10? Little Tommy Carroll, five. So much promise, not fit enough. He's, he's, I, th I think he's, he's, his, his body, I think, is ruined. 
I'd be I'd be very very surprised if he's a professional footballer next year. Um, Harper six, he looked he looked decent at the start. I remember seeing him play um, for Ipswich against Dartford in a pre-season friendly when there was a lot of hype. Rakeem the Dream, oh he's played in the Premier League for West Brom, um, yada yada, and um, he he didn't fit into the Paul Cook system, which would suggest that he might not have been like. You know, like a Michael O'Leary, West Brom, Mark Ashton type signing him and him in the real Eduardo. Um, I would like to see him in this uh, in this um, K Mac setup. Uh, Evans seven, um, really like his his, his passion. Um, like Ben said, those those pinged passes. He's hard in the tackle, uh, and I think I think it it I think it'd be difficult to see where him and Morsey would fit in together now because we're seeing Morsey kind of I think Morsey is probably doing the role that Evans possibly might be doing now um and and Backinson's doing what Morsey should be doing if that makes sense but anyway we're not here to talk about that um Backinson seven let's say you know one minute he looks an absolute worldie doesn't he and then the next minute he'll give the ball away with a stupid like two foot pass when he's got a defender on his shoulder or an opposition player on his shoulder it's so frustrating you just think he's one of these players that if he was just a little bit more um a little bit more assertive and a little bit more aware um then he wouldn't make those silly mistakes and you know obviously i'm i'm quite i sat front row the other night so me and my dad could sit down and it was just you, you could see it you could see it happen every time he did it you could see it happening um uh, which is just so frustrating and um see so yeah backinson tie big tie He's good. I like him. I like him. Hopefully join him permanently for a nominal fee. Um, Morsi, nine. That boy. That boy. Just... Oh, he scares me, honestly. Like, when you... When they do those videos of him coming in, and if you pause it when he looks at the camera, it's like, ah! But you, can you imagine facing up to that? I mean... He's got every attribute you 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 would want. I like his I like his like running like he's running with his like his, like his hands and <laughs> thing. I love that. Um, but I think you know we we don't want any more bans. We don't want any more suspensions, do we? So we we've got to get like I think is it the guy that wears the yellow boots like that sports psychologist guy that's been brought in and nobody knew who he was and he was kind of identified, wasn't he? Do you know who I'm talking about? The, the member of staff that's working part time. Oh, He's a sports psychologist. He looks looks a bit name. like a Bond villain. Yeah, he name. needs to get into Morsi's head to just ignore all that other crap. People trying to wind him up because, yeah, I think he's got a short fuse. But he's the sort of he's the for, he's the sort of guy that you want on your side that you'd hate to play against him. Um, so, yeah, there you go. That's me. Okay. Okay. Now it's time for wingers and number 10s. Number 10s. Yes, um, we're getting close to the hour mark, so we're going to try to wrap these up as quick as possible, but still have your time to show, show me your markings and all that. So let's go and do 10s. Fraser, Scott Fraser, Connor Chaplin, Sonny Luco, Louis Barry and Burson Selina. They're technically 10s. Yeah, I'm going to call them 10s. They're, they're my 10 anyway. So Ben, over to you. I know we're doing this in a, a different order that I probably first spoke about but um i'm sure you've still got your ratings ready to go ben yeah you ready? so that's four four players chaplin fraser barry and um selena aluko as well and aluko yeah sorry aluko so um a little bit critical of our number 10s actually not got enough goals have they um barry not applicable one <laughs> no, don't need we're not wasting breath um fraser four what could have been? Should have, would have, could have. Oh. Sold him in January. Missed penalty against Burton. Career never got started. He's not really done much at Charleston either. So maybe he'll come back and be the League One number player. Um, best number 10 player like he was last year, next season. Who knows? Um, then I've gone for Shalina and Aluko. I've both given them six. I think they have, unfortunately, um, particularly these last sort of six or eight weeks when we've been trying to make a playoff push and um, flatter to deceive, not enough goals, not enough final, um, you know, killer passes in the final third. They don't, 
Um, yeah, they haven't done enough. I'm not. I'm not saying we we shouldn't offer both deals. We should both. We should sign both of them. I think we can develop um, under them um, as number tens or in different roles. I really like both of them as players. But when I'm looking at the positions that they play, particularly when we play one striker, we've got to get more goals and assists out, out of them, and we haven't. I think Aluko three goals all season. I know some fans rave about him. He is a superb player, but I'm sorry when you play that far up the pitch, three goals all season is not good enough. It, it just isn't. Is is the true facts, and it's one of the reasons why we haven't got in the playoffs. And the same with Selena, someone with his talent. I think he's got six goals or five goals. It's not again. That's good enough. Chaplin for me, I think he should start every week because he gets the goals. He got his tenth goal. I'm not, I'm not done. Jump, I'm not jumping on a bandwagon because he scored Tuesday night. I just think if you're a number ten, you're scoring ten goals. That's a very very good return. And he and I think if he played every single week, he'd have got more than that. So he's actually got seven. Um, yeah, we're really pleased with Chaplin. He's had a good season. So, yeah, Barry won, Selena and Aluko got sixes, Chaplin seven and Fraser four. Okay, Sex, over to you. The tens. Very similar. Barry won. <laughs> Fraser four. Um, again, he, he looked promising when we signed him. It's very, I'm very, very disappointed that it didn't work out for him here. Um, unfortunately for him, Cook played him on the left hand side. Um, wasn't his prime position he needed to be on the striker um or well, he, he even had a good game in the centre mid didn't he um a couple of years against now but you know he's it just didn't work out for him here and he, he hasn't done anything at Charlton either he went to go and play someone he hasn't I think he hasn't played that many so um very very unfortunate him uh Selena I've gone for six Selena frustrates me um he's supposed to be this awesome player that we've got but every it only happens now and again um I think it's like one in four games or something um I wouldn't sign him personally. I wouldn't sign him for next season. He just he doesn't do enough for me. It's not consistent enough. He has got flair. He has he's a he is a brilliant player when he wants to be. It's just when he wants to be. And that's the bit that I don't like about him. Um he, he needs to be more consistent um for me. And then Chaplin and Luco. Bit um debatable for Luco, but I've gone for seven for both. Um and Luco hasn't got the goals, he hasn't got the assists. I do agree, but he's also Watching him play, he creates space. I mean, uh, he's done it. He did it for um, against Rotherham. That ball to Burns for Norwood's chance was all came from Maluko. That ball at Gillingham for Bond's goal was from Maluko. So he hasn't got the numbers in the assists and the goals, but he has got the numbers in terms of the pre-assists or the, you know, the, the, the passes that makes the goal. So he he's there or thereabouts when he wants to, when he when he's playing. Um, I think he, that's probably why he's not quite. Um, his numbers aren't quite so good. He, he does need to do more. I do admit that he does need to get a couple more assists. He does need to get a couple more goals. Um, but then, you know, there's there's other stuff that he does that warrants his place in the team. And to be fair to him, he hasn't played as much as Selena or Chaplin. I don't think has he. Um, and there's been times on McKenna, where all those goals did come under Cook. There's been times on McKenna where he came on 89th minute. He hasn't started really much on McKenna. I think if he had it done, we'd have seen more from him. Um, so there's that side to him as well. And Chaplin, yeah, he's like tenth goal of the season on Tuesday night. Just I think he's the best number ten we signed um, this season. To be honest, um, does need to do more now and again. Sometimes not quite, um, not always consistent. Let's say, but most of the time he is. And when he, when, you know, he's. I wouldn't mind seeing him up front sometimes either. He's, I think he's just a all round good player. Um, and hope he stays here next season. Indeed, yeah, he's a bit of a pest in the Connor Chaplin. He's yeah. here, there, and everywhere. But um, yeah, ten goals gone a bit under the radar. And uh, you know, who's going to get the golden boot this season? It will be very interesting. We've got two good more games, Crew and Charlton. Who's going to get it? Bond currently is leading that. Um, but over to you, Bono. <laughs> still, <laughs> yeah, somehow, still, you still, yeah, somehow. Only twelve goals though, which is disappointing. But we'll get mm -hmm. into the forwards later. Get your ratings on that. But Bono, take away for the number tens. Uh, poor old Barry. Only going to give him a three. Saw him a couple of times in the old pizza platter. And um, he was a kid. It's his first professional season. It's like, it was, you know, all the Villa fans, oh, he needs to play. You know, he was, what, 15 years old, 13, 12? <laughs> Looks about eight, I don't know. But um, bless him, he'll be an absolute baller in a few years' time. But that was a weird, that was a weird signing. Didn't he join at the same time, on the same day as Aluko? Yeah. Or something yeah. like that. It's like... Geez, do we need another attacking midfielder? But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, Fraser four. I'm so so disappointed with 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 that guy. So much promise, 
you look at his form his pedigree etc etc he never looked fit he always looked like he had shin splints or something always looked unhappy um you know you, you see him coming into the ground or walking around he just looked miserable and you just think you you don't look happy and you've been here bloody two months um so i don't know whether that was a signing where the player didn't want to play i don't know now's not the time to speculate um selena chalina whatever you want to say at six exactly like seg said on his day he just looks like flipping he should be at the world cup tearing up amongst the best and then the other times you just forget he's on the pitch and when he is playing badly He's a bit bad tempered. We saw that push in the chest. Very, very lucky to stay on against um, Rotherham, in my humble opinion. Luco, seven. Another strange signing. It was like, do, do, we, do we need this player? And I think that's a problem with all of the players mentioned in, in this kind of section of the team. We, we've got so many, we're having to rotate them, I think, to keep them happy. And it's just nobody can get a decent run. Uh, but yeah, Luco, seven. He's. he's touch and his technique and his skill is absolutely phenomenal but I, I keep him just purely to have him around because i think he's a good influence um chaplin charlie chaplin eight what a player what a player personally i'd play him much much higher up the pitch um than that i think he can play alongside another forward in a, in a two but um what a player buzzing around um obviously part of the community project as well um brilliant what what a man love his smile as well He's, I think he's the best four foot ten professional footballer in the world, isn't he? Absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm, the number tens. Um, then wingers, Wes Burns and Carl Edwards. Um, ben, take away. Yeah, two very different scores here. Hopefully we'll see a lot more from Edwards um, next season. He looked absolutely incredible at times. Um, one of my pet peeves, um, which we've discovered, well, we've talked about already with Luco, just the numbers aren't there. I mean, there weren't when he signed. I, I, I was, and I'm not being wise after the event. I remember when, particularly, there were a few people, I think, on the main pod getting very, very excited about his talent. And I was thinking, the guy's like got two assists in 24 games or something for West Brom as a winger. That doesn't sound great pedigree brilliant dribbler brilliant running players can take out two or three players final balls lacking can't finish hopefully under a good coach like McKenna that'll change next season so much talent um I mean he didn't contribute anything he got four for me and uh, people are gonna say that's mad that's really harsh he literally contributed nothing he didn't he only set up one goal and that was Wickham away and that was only because Stockdale tried to punch it and got a flap on it instead and bomb put it in so I'm not even sure I think that's an assist but it's not really one assist. Okay, it's harsh, but we've got to be better next season. If we want to get promoted, no point giving these players six or seven. Score report, four. Do better next year, please, Carl. Amazing, amazing player going forward. So, more numbers next season, please. Burns um, is up there with our best player this season. For a right wing back, we all know about his goals, attacking threat. But he works so hard going back to help Janoy as well. There were a couple of instances on Tuesday night where he's blocking crosses and stopping the ball at the byline. I think we've absolutely slogged him like a dead horse as well the second half of the season. He plays every minute, every game. He looks like he needs a rest, bless him. He needs the summer off. I've, I would dilly-dally between eight and nine and we're not allowed half scores. So let's be really positive and give a nine. His goal return from right wing back. And, and he is playing right wing. I know we go forward that side, but as I said, he doesn't shirk his defensive responsibility. If he can't get a nine, then, you know, I am really a Scrooge. So nine for Burns, four for Edwards. Okay, four and nine. Um, Segs, are you different or are you on the same wavelength as Ben? More or less similar. Burns, nine. Um, contributed going forward and back. Um, yeah, he's done really well for us this season. The assists as well. Um, there is room for improvement, I think. Um, some of his crossing can, is a bit um, questionable, but then, you know, that's going to happen. He's, he's arguably our top three best signings um, this season. So, yeah, he's a nine. Um keep him fit next season and we're that hand that right hand side is still going to be a middle force without doubt especially Genoi there as well um and then Edwards five um just he's frustrating again because he's got he's got the talent sort of skill it just there's no end product although having said that that sharp burn or cross whichever one, whichever one it is I don't know people had different opinions on it if I'd have gone in I'd been one of the goals of the season um so yeah and would have won would have beat Burton then if I'd have gone in obviously but um yeah, obviously he's been injured as well, so give him a five. Um, 
I look forward to seeing the next season. I hope he's going to improve, progress, and have a major part on a, our team next season. But for this season, it's been a bit lacklustre, unfortunately. Um, but there's room for improvement, definitely. There is indeed. Uh, Bono, over to you then to finish up with the wingers. Burns, Edwards, what are you giving them? Um, Kyle, the real Eduardo Edwards. Uh, he gets a six from me. Um, <laughs> I, I like him. I want to see much more of him. Like Ben said, must must do better. Um, it'd be interesting to see where he fits in in a Kieran kind of side. But I, I think if anybody's the man to improve his game and kind of get him firing, then then our backroom setup is is is, is great for that. Burns, I'm only giving Burns an eight um, because where where he is good. He's also a little inconsistent for me. I'd like to see him do it more often. Uh, Ben's exactly right. Bless him. He looks at the end of every game. He looks absolutely uh, exhausted. I wanted to use a much more harsher word, but um, this is um, it's a family show, kids. Uh, and um, and like the lack of a. Sometimes we don't have any wide players on the bench, um, which you know who are you going to stick on? I think Luco's gone there recently hasn't he when we've had to drag burns off burns took a really hard knock after about five minutes on tuesday night and i was really surprised that he that he finished um but i love him uh he's he's got great hair his beard is nice he seems really cool um um yeah um you i wonder how far he will go with us so yeah but what what a player what a player! A few tweaks, and he he will be he will be so so good, so so good. He will be indeed. We better talk about the forwards now, Ross. Yeah, forwards time. I don't, uh, I don't want to butt in too much. I was going to say I think it's a bit unfair calling him inconsistent. I think there's a few games recently where he's been worked out on that right hand side, and because we haven't got a left hand side as yeah. attacking threat as much before, they just teams have worked him out now. Him and Genoi, which is they just they focus on that side more because they know our left hand side isn't as strong. So I don't think I don't think it's him, I don't think it's him being inconsistent. I think it's just teams have worked out. That's where our strong point is. I think I think the inconsistency is that if you're a good player, then you need to do it against the good teams in the in the division, and and we haven't done that. And unfortunately, Burns hasn't had that many good games against the better teams. He's not alone in that, you know. I'm just being honest with 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 what I see. Um, but I do think we are reliant on him, which maybe makes us easier to scout or easier to work out because everything you know 67 percent you know 75 percent stuff like that play down the right hand side um the weird thing is with that and i know we need to finish up and do the forwards but the weird thing is that if, if you look at football it, it's asymmetrical there are no teams where it's perfectly balanced between the right center and left you need to play for your strength so this dream that we have of getting somebody just like Burns. Well, we won't get somebody just like Burns, but hopefully we will get somebody that could nail it on. You know, if you could mould, if you could get like a weird mutation machine and mould um, Millie Thompson and and flipping Penny, because he has a wand of left foot, mould them together, you, you you might have the answer, I don't know, but that's an, in, that's an exciting part of our summer transfer activity, isn't it? But um, no, fair play, sex for the challenge. Always, always, always a, a lively debate with that kind of thing. Um, I get your point. Else? I just, I was gonna say, I think there's when he hasn't played, we've looked so much worse as a team, and him and Morsey, to be fair, I think that when when either when either misses out, we miss him big time. Um, yeah, he needs to improve his crossing at times. Though, he does. He does um, need to improve his crossing. Yeah, yeah. I said that earlier. He that's what he's improve. inconsistent with his crossing. Yeah, yeah. so I his, like his crosses are much better on the floor than they are in the air. Mm. No, that with him. Yeah. Most of the time, as soon as he goes for, he gets it up. It, it goes too far. But I like, think mostly. Burns has been quite honest, hasn't he? Um, you know, and 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 wingers. I, I played wide when I wasn't a keeper. I was I was a wide player. And what what I found is that you're either good at whipping in crosses, like hooked ball to the far post, or you're good at like smashing it in. And and Burns, that is his forte, and that really worked for us at the start of the season. That combination between Wesley Burns and Bacall Mon at the start of the year, where they just like yeah. get out, get the ball out wide, smash it in low in the back of the net. We we haven't we haven't seen that lately. So haven't haven't yeah. said that. I think no Janoy, we don't see the best of Burns either, to be fair. I think 
do you know what gives them that freedom? Which, yeah, partnership. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How tech they do, we won't try to do that on shapes. That was one thing that my, my dad noticed uh, up close, you know, uh, my dad was saying, that 44, look where he is, he's on the edge of the box. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's what he does. That's the Ipswich way, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get used to it. That's what we're going to see. Yeah. Um, okay, forwards time then. Ben bringing you in. Joe Piggott, Macaulay Bond. Macaulay Bond currently is our top goal scorer this season. Joe Piggott, just looking at his stats, three goals in 28 games. Of course, a lot of them, some of them actually probably just coming off the bench for a couple of minutes. Um, I have felt sorry for, for Piggott. Um, what are you rating those strikers out of 10? Yeah, a bit obviously very disappointing our forward line since, um, well, 2022 really. Um Everyone still loves Macaulay Bond, one of our own, willing him to score on Tuesday night. Shame he went off, but I think we do have options still, despite none of them scoring. I don't mind the fact that we play, whoever we start, 60, 65 minutes, we change up for some fresh legs. You know, they do work hard up there. So no problem with that. Um, Macaulay, I've, I've still given him a six. Um, I think that's just about right. He is still our top goal scorer. That rich vein of form was absolutely incredible with some, with some unreal finishing in there as well. Um, yeah, I just really hope he can find um, his golden touch again, whether it be a crew or gets the chance at Charlton at home. If that's a swan song and we last see him in Ipswich shirt, um, then then so be it. Um, Piggott scored 20 goals a season for Wimbledon three years in a row and then he can't hit a barn door, unfortunately for us. It shows how much confidence makes such a difference. The last time I saw him start was um, Oxford away, and I think he did all right that game. I think he got pulled apart by their centre halves. I mean, the amount of times he got fouled or the ref didn't pick it up. So sometimes football goes that way. You, you know, he just needed a break along with Bond, just needed a break. A chance, a bit like Norway had against Rotherham. Never know, picking up the pitch, might taking it. We could be talking a bit differently. So again, feel a bit sorry for him. No lack of effort. I do think he, he works the line quite well. He, he can bring other players into play, but. You judge from your goal scoring, he hasn't done enough, so pick it for four and Bond for six. Okay, Sex, over to you. Yeah, same. Um, Bond started off really, really well. Um, got us all those goals in the first half of the season. It's kind of dried up now, isn't it? Um, unfortunately, nice to see him get 20, just short of 20, 20 goals this season for us. You know, he's one of our own and that kind of stuff. Um, just for some reason, whatever reason, it just it hasn't worked out for him this half of the season. Um, and Piggott, I feel I do feel sorry for Piggott, 20 goals a season last year. Um, he he does show he can do it. Um, I think he's just been unlucky at times, especially um, Bond's form. Start of the season has been Piggott's downfall, really. And uh, it just he couldn't get back into the side because Bond was just scoring. And arguably, you can't you can't drop Bond. And why should you when he's scoring all those goals? So I think um, Bond, Piggott's been unlucky in that sense. Um, but he hasn't he hasn't been able to pick up that form from last season, the second half of the year, and that's, you know that's, that's affected him. Um, I think he's. Whether it's because he he likes playing up front in the two or what, I'm not sure. But it's just it's what it is. So I'll give him a four. Um, you know, just, if he's here next season, hopefully he can up his tally a bit. Indeed. Uh, Bono, over to you then to round off this. Ratings of the signings this season. Um, it's been good fun. Really good fun. Uh, as I, I saw so many people tweeting about it. We had to do it. We had to. Uh, Bono, finish off then your two ratings for the forwards. Uh Joseph Piggott gets a five for me. Um, he's, he's been unlucky. Sometimes he looks really decent. Other times he's just, like Ben said, confidence for strikers especially just looks, you know, he's cut his hair short and he's he's not as good as what he was when his hair was slightly, you know, a little bit like mine. Um, <laughs> Macaulay Bond. I'm judging the season as a whole seven because, you know, at the start of the year, the rich vein of form, he's one of our own. We're going to win the league, blah, blah, blah. He just looked, he looked unstoppable, didn't he? The goal celebrations in front of the North Stand, the sink. And then, yeah. He now looks, also looks like he doesn't enjoy his football. Just, but then again, for the last month or so, the, the, May the central front man with when only played one up front has looked unhappy because he's so isolated. So the gap, the, like the gap, like it's just I don't know. But on, I've loved seeing him play. Just like it's been really like good for the soul, like heartwarming. Just seeing it, he loves it. I think he's got a really nice vibe around the place as well. So 
and I think, you know, for reasons like that, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd keep players like that because he adds something to the fibre of the club. Um, but, yeah, love to see him play against Charlton and whether or not that's his swan song, that's, um, that's um, well, that's yet to be seen, isn't it? And Pickett, is he going to be here? Are we going to keep him? Long-term deal. It might come good. You never know. You never know. But... Going back to confidence, he hit the post twice. I think in February, I can't remember who the first one was against. We also did it at Fleetwood. Um, yeah. That'd have gone in, you know, it's, it's unfortunate for him. Um, it scores one or both of them, you know, arguably different player following on from that. So also going back to Bond as well. You get two cool moments from him. One against Sheffield Wednesday behind the keeper. Also having Portsmouth as well. So, you know, yeah. can't forget yeah. <laughs> So two great moments from him there. Yeah. I think um, we'll do we'll do many podcasts, many different video features on moments in the season, the bad, the worse, and all that sort of stuff. But um, but there we go. Um, another great feature for the podcast. I hope you've enjoyed listening. Um, let's get into then. We've got two more games to go. Um, Crew is first up though, um, away to Gresty Road. Um, ben, we're not going to be talking about what we want to see, predictions, a team, blah blah blah, because it doesn't really matter now. Um, but in terms of this away game games because this is the final away game of the season um for you what has been your best and worst away day of the season charlton away was dreadful didn't even resemble anything that looked like a football team that night just so demoralizing lowest point of the season um for the for the only time only time all season i wish we were watching i follow and the pandemic was still existed it was that bad I wish yeah. I was hearing Paul Lambert still talking about playing for Bruce Dortmund after the 90 minutes. That's how bad it was. Um, everything that went on after the game with the crowd. Um, the only good thing was the trains were on time and I got home at a decent hour because I left on 90 minutes and didn't watch injury time. Um, best away best away game. Um, luckily saw quite a few. I got really lucky with the games I saw. I got a second half season ticket this year and I only saw us lose, I think, three times. Um, I've been to, I think, 17 games. Four, no, four four times. Anyway, either way, I've been very, very, very lucky with the games I've seen. I've seen us win most of the games. Um, Wickham away, though, um, was my favourite game. Just absolutely just bossed them in terms of going forward. Just so exciting. We defended well that night. And just on the break, we looked absolutely irresistible. And to score a goal when the game where you're a little bit nervous at 3-1 thinking Wickham could get back into it and then Selena scores when you know you know you know you're going to score when it's dribbling into an empty net was just a great sort of um icing on the cake so Wickham away is fantastic um getting away from the ground is an absolute joke they sold out their car park again so you know it took so long to get away because you know selling out the car park is huge news for them so um I'll probably do it all again next year Wickham away brilliant charting away the absolute pits yeah Indeed. So we've got a few new grounds that we could, you know, Forest Green Rovers, they look like they're going to come up. So that's a new ground to tick off for a lot of people. Of course, Derby now officially relegated. So we'll be going to Derby next season. Um, Segs, over to you. Your, your best and worst. You're, 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 you're a travel boy. You've been about, you know, in League One this season. You've been to Plymouth, more coming back and all that sort of stuff. Um, what has been the highs? What has been the lows this season? Yeah, I've done all but three away games this season. So, including crew. So I'll see, yeah. Got a lot to choose from. Um, worst, yeah, is obviously Charlton. Um, worst, worst away game of the season. Ben said it all really. It's just, just part of that transitional period of the season where we'd sacked our manager. Sort of all quite shocked at, well, not all, I guess, but I was definitely quite shocked that we are still sacked in at that time. Um, wondered where we were going from here. It seemed like there's, there's obviously no little, there was not as much plan as we thought there might have been um, when he was sacked, obviously, because it took a little while. And, you know, it's just what's going on here. The team of strangers. Um, and then, yeah, and then I want to go for a middle, middle away ground game here. And put that it could have been so so good at Oxford, but then that last minute equaliser just it's it was one of the most excellent, excellent fun, brilliant times of the season when we scored, and then the most heartbreaking, upsetting, crushing, oh, just coming out of that after the game. Never felt so low in ages as an Ipswich fan. Um, you know, it's, it's our, probably our last chance to get, you know, push for the playoffs. Um, I was like, we had to win that game and we didn't so, so close. You know, it's just a horrible, horrible moment. And then fav, uh, favourite game, it's, it's a toss up between Portsmouth and Wickham. Um, 
I think Wickham just edges it because we went 1-0 down and came back 1-4-1. One, one. You know, it's seen as well at the end and, you know, it was a great performance. But so was Portsmouth. Um, it's, it's hard to choose between the two. Um, but also, also I like, had the day in Portsmouth that, that, um, before the game. Whereas Wickham, we drove down from 4 o'clock. So, you know, does that come into account? So, I'd probably say Wickham just, just, just edges it because of the... the um, they're coming back from behind, and also didn't have to pay to park uh, where we parked. The car park was full. Just they got us up on the grass verge. Just parked us there. <laughs> Happy Easy days. to get out. Yeah, so that gives an extra point. Free parking. <laughs> Free parking. Yeah. There we go. Um, but they feel so long ago, don't they? Those those two games. They do. Yeah. So long it's, ago. There's also a good shout for Gillingham as well. To be fair, and that's how I wrote yeah. them down earlier. Once we, we won, Gillingham Fleetwood is still a good day as well. Wimbledon, good night. It's just we have had a few away good away games. It's just. Those two stick out more. It's probably because we won four 0 It went four one for a bit yeah. different. That so doing a well. really um, special shout out to um, Doncaster as well because I met John Watson before the game. We had a lovely romantic meal, yeah, and um, we dominated that game. Although it was one nil because it gets spot well second bottom of the league. I couldn't give it as my favourite, but it was a really good evening. There's yeah. only one I didn't do the shit. I wish I went to really. But then, yes, yeah, so. two's a night. Two can't do them all, sex. No. Can't do them all, mate. Don't even, can't do them all. Um, one man who did Barrow away in the FA Cup when it was live on TV on a Wednesday was Bono, and he said it's not his worst away day this season because he just enjoyed the adventure, the road trip. Uh, but Bono, over to you. Your worst and favourite away game of the season. Should we? Should we stick to? Um, we'll stick to Barrow in Furness in sunny Cumbria, shall we? Um, home of the submarine fleet or whatever they do there. Holker Street, 5,000 people. Um, <laughs> ITV, free bus travel because the club felt sorry for us because we witnessed that absolute abomination at home to them. Um, yeah, I, it was it was an adventure. Um, I went on my own. There was about 200 people there. I, I think it's going to be one of these I was there moments. Um, we, we were terrible. We were really, really bad. And that was that was, I think, the game where the whole murmurings about oh, give give McGreal and Dyer the job full time, you know, get Terry Butcher in as well. That you know, they're, they're both, they're, you know, they're all Ipswich people. It's going to be fantastic. We were awful. Barrow weren't that good. Um, but just being in that away end, um, being being able to get Madri on tap for three pound eighty, um, going into a sports bar at the end of the car park. Speaking about car parks, you'll like this, Segs. Walking into a um, like a working man's club, it was like Phoenix Nights, and like they were sm they were smoking in there. It was great. You walk in there, the music stopped, and everybody turned around, and they had like no teeth and stuff like that. And I had my Ipswich scarf on. And I was like, "Good evening, everybody," and everyone's like, "Oh, hi!" Right. And um, it was just it was just cool. There was one joker. <laughs> he had a Norwich City scarf, but it's like, and you know, we're we're playing in a competition that we've actually won. But there you go. Um, it was just. Yeah, a nice. I think I got home at four twenty-five in the morning after leaving at ten a.m. Oh lots, my lots god! Of, like, yeah, the one official supporters bus. It, it's funny because we parked up. We went in. I looked around the club shop. Like, there was no one in, no staff in there. There was no members of staff in reception because they were all kind of watching. I think the Barrow players were arriving, and obviously ITV were there. And um, I just walked into the club shop and um, I think there was one of the ITV presenters there. That was pandemic. So everybody was face masked. I think it was Gabe, Gabriel Clark, Gabriel Clark, somebody like that. But um, yeah, as I was walking out the club shop, the town players were walking in. I had a little chat with Norwood. Um, Kenlock played as well. He was there with his bag of Watsits, maybe. Um, El Mazzini. Oh, I felt really sorry for Christian Walton because it was an absolute horror show in front of him. But um, yeah, but unbelievably. And of course, we wore the black and grey kit. Mm. And that's probably what makes it my favourite because seeing that up close was, was fantastic. Um, worst away day. I'll keep this one short. Um, worst away are day. You, are you calling Barrow your favourite away day of the season? Yeah. I've not seen us, I've not seen us win. I've not seen us win away. So, uh, fair enough. I've seen this draw: Shrewsbury, Sheffield Wednesday, Sunderland. Um, oh, I can't, I can't remember. Please don't go to any away games next year, Bono. 
Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Held out. It's you all along. And if we can make John Watson not go to the home games because he hasn't seen us win at home, we'll probably get promoted next year. Wait. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But yes, Ross, unbelievably, Barrow in the FA Cup second round replay was um was my favourite away day just because it was different. The venture. Just, yeah. Just because it was different, you know. These glory boys that go to Portsmouth and Wickham. Um, <laughs> and yeah, least favourite. I wish I went to those games. But I think what I think the Wickham game, one of them was changed, wasn't it? it was one of them? Was yeah, it, it was supposed to be changed. September, one Saturday in September. Saturday probably, break, yeah. yeah. I got moved to I November, was, Tuesday in November. I was, I was working that night, so I couldn't go. That's my excuse. And I'm sticking to it. And yeah, the worst one was Charlton. Just the, the atmosphere. There was the crowds of... Oh, oh, yeah, I mean, there's three and a half thousand, I think we went to that. But London away days were a little different. There was trouble on the train, on the way in and on the way back. The performance on the pitch, Toto. Um, the thing at the end with him, bless him. Just, yeah, bloomers. Oh, <laughs> bless. The famous game day interview, yeah. Oh, seeing like, yeah, bless him. Bloomers, we love you. Um yeah, that was that was awful. Where did, and and you know what? It was a it was a midweek game under the lights, wearing white. Charlton, we're in a poor run of form, and it's just like oh, it's just awful, wasn't it? Yeah. But at least we got to saw the second best midfielder at the club, Cameron Humphreys, make an appearance that night. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Um, I'm going to yeah. bring my shout, my favourite away day because you know worst day is is definitely going to be Charlton away. But my favourite, and we did actually lose this game. But it's because of my adventure as well. I stayed at good old John Watson's house and um, had, had a lovely evening with him and in morning. And we travelled up to Accrington. Um, so, yeah, Ben, I'm bringing in John Watson as well because I mean, he's, he's great company. So that is probably Accrington away when we lost. Um, and, yeah. They're really nice well, Accrington fans, aren't they? Yeah. When uh, Very, very quick story. When I came back to my local pub after Cambridge played Accrington, I forgot what they had. I think we we just won at home. I can't remember the game. There was a couple in there from Accrington, and we just happened to sit next to them. We asked where they're from. They're from Blackburn. Went to Accrington. They wrote my name down on their Cambridge ticket stub. Their name, sorry, and their number, and said if well, I go to Accrington away next year, I must come and stay with them, or, or or pay them a visit, or come and have a drink in the bar after. Just really nice. What a lovely story. A nice little story. Yeah, lovely story. I got funny. I got I got funny story about Accrington this year went up there um you know rob and steve obviously um they were in the fan zone bar went up to him i saw rob thought he was talking to his dad steve turns out it was someone who's also bald went up to him jumped on his shoulders up and as soon as i was up in the air i saw steve standing over there in the, <laughs> oh. just, just the other side so i jumped on this random guy because i thought he was steve it's fine. It's fine. We, yeah. We've all done that. We've all done that. You know, you, yeah. you, you've seen a bull person. You go, oh, that's my mate Steve. Um, yeah. <laughs> how, did, how did he react, Mister the, the follically challenged? How did he? Um, that, how did he... I call him Accrington Steve. He was he was fine about it actually. He was just laughing, and joking about it. Yeah. So, oh, you're took friendly. It, took it all in good stead. Yeah, you stuff it, people. Oh, friendly, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. Um, we've gone over ninety minutes of football, basically this podcast. But it's been a pleasure. It has been fantastic, Ben. Any other business, my friend? No, just um, thank everybody for listening as always, and also really good company again tonight with Segs and Bono and Ross as well. Um, really enjoyed being a part of it, and just hope um, if it's my last appearance this season, which probably will be, just hope we do better next year. Here's to three points at Crew, and then finishing the season off in style, sunny Portman Road next Saturday with twenty five thousand. Let's hope for twenty five thousand. Hopefully, um, Segs. Any other business, my friend? Uh, no, just looking forward to getting out of this league when we're going to the grounds with the bloody ice cream van stand. <laughs> but yeah, yes, it's, it's bad. Yeah, but we still. I'm still calling it Gresty Road. I'm not calling it Mournflake Stadium. Whatever. I'm calling it. Other... I, call, I call it Alexandra. Still. Yes, definitely. Um, Bono, over to you. Any other business, my friend? Uh, other than just to wish everybody well, stay safe, look after each other, and be kind. Um, no, it's been it's been great fun, great company, and um, yeah, looking forward to a HMS Pistol League set sail next year, baby. 
Um, I didn't hear any of that, but, uh, but I've got two more things to do. Of course, got to give a shout out to our sponsors at manscape.com. Use the code KOA, get 20% off and free delivery. And of course, follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on all the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Other ones are out there, of course, at Kings of Anglia. So yeah, um, Ben, Segs, Bono, it's been a pleasure. I hope everybody's enjoyed listening this week. We'll be back for much more content, many more pods. So stay tuned for all of those. Goodbye for me. Goodbye. There you go.